Okay, hey everybody, it's Chris Petri. Welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you uh, might be. You might uh, be in a different time zone than I am. Let's have some fun here. We're doing more holiday, holiday paintings, all right? Hey, is this not exciting? Look at this, all the cool, interesting colors here. The reds, the greens, some flesh tones, a happy smiley face, a little stuffed animal here. Look at the little stuffed animal, isn't this great? <laughs> Hello there. Okay, we're going to do a Christmas holiday painting with, with a figurine that we have. You know, they're uh, at my house here, my family, we have like figurines that we sit by the Christmas trees in the house. So I just, you know, took one and said, let me draw this, let me paint this, let me have some fun here and we'll make a video of it. So I'm hoping you'll try this out, try this painting out. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to explain how to do this real simply. Um, no, this is a lot of fun when you're doing any kind of like figurines, stuffed animals, porcelain type figures, anything like that. If you're going to recreate those, um, and use them for your subject matter, when you watercolor paint, it's so much fun because it's, there's no stress. You don't, you're not worrying about, you know, like if you're a professional watercolor artist and you're trying to paint like a, a dignitary, like a president or someone like that, you know, ooh, you're, you're really, ex you know, you're tense, you're trying to get every little detail perfect. Not this. This here, we're having fun. We're enjoying our time. You can make things, you know, you, it doesn't have to be perfect is what I'm saying. So you're just going to have fun. You're going to capture the moment of having an enjoyable time with the excitement of the colors, the, the feeling of the holidays. You're not really so worried about this, you know, getting everything accurate. We're just having a good time. So here we have our figurine. We're gonna set this across from us. So I will set this up across to my right. So over there to my right, I'm gonna set this up on some foam board. So I have a good backdrop of white foam board. And then we'll start to draw this, okay? And we'll paint this too, and we'll have a great time. You can make this into a card or just a painting to hang up in the house where you live. And, uh, okay, the only thing I have to say in preparing for this drawing and painting is you're going to want to get the scale somewhat close. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Uh, so you would just really basically look at your figurine, your stuffed, you know, if you have a, like a, um, like a stuffed animal or, you know, figurine. You're just going to look at it and say to yourself, okay, let me look at the scale of it. You're going to want to get the scale correct. The same way if you're going to, if you're going to draw like, you know, let's say we're going to draw a human form. Let's say you're going to draw a human standing up and you would say, okay, well, how many, most artists, if they're drawing the figure, the human form, they're going to usually, they would, you know, they would say to you, if you asked them, you said, well, how do you draw a human being? They would say, well, we... As an artist, we draw them, we use the human head as our scale, and we say that the human body, the human form, is approximately seven and a half head lengths tall. So if you wanted to get approximate scales on things, you would say, okay, so the human body is seven and a half head lengths tall. So you would draw your first head, head length like that, and you say, okay, that's the human head here. And then you're going to go seven and a half times three, four, five, six, seven and a half. And that's going to be the approximate uh, dimensions as far as height goes for the human form. So you'll have your shoulders. Just a, like a quick representation. And your legs and your feet. Okay, so that's just a real crude, rough idea of the human form. And you're going to have the human form is going to be, like I said, the scale of seven and a half head lengths equals the human 
form for height. So if we use this same print this principle same principle and same idea when we're going to draw or render a figurine, we'll use the same the same idea. We're just going to do we're going to look at our figurine and say, "Okay, I'm looking at my figurine across from me." Okay, we got the head there and the hat. So we have the Christmas hat there, the Santa Claus hat almost looking and we've got the Okay, so the head, we're going to look at it across from us, and then I use my pen, and I say, okay, my, my Sharpie is about here. One head length is about half the cap. Then I hold up my Sharpie across from me and look at the figurine, and I hold up this in front of my, uh, when I'm looking out at the figurine in front of me, over to the right over here, I just hold up my pen in front of it and say, okay, let me measure the head and see how how large the head is and okay and then I get a head length and that's one cap let's say then I look at the body of the figurine and say okay well the the body looks like it's one of these and another half of these so if you can imagine I'm using my pen cap to scale across from me looking at the figurine so now I know the figurine is one head length that we've established and the body is one and a half head lengths. And then we have the legs. So I just say, okay, one head length there. And then we have one and one half. So you have one head length there. One head length here, like that. And then a half a head length, like that. And that's all. So I guess what I'm saying is, all you have to worry about really with this is in the beginning when you're just starting out to sketch this and draw this is get that scale a little bit correct. You know, try to get it pretty accurate. So if you have one head length up here, then you look at the body of it and say, okay, well, the body's about one head length and another half of head length like that. That's all you have to worry about. And the legs are over here. So we have our legs like that. So that's not a big, big deal, but the legs are a little bit, you can have fun with that. We might... We might not uh, have everything in the picture, so if our if our pi picture frame or our our rectangle is like this, you know, we're not worried. Maybe we're not going to draw in the feet and the booties. We might try to. Those look pretty cool. The uh, figurine has these really nice uh, shoes on. These like booty things, which look kind of cool, and there are sparkles on there. And so I'm not sure if we're going to draw those into our painting. And it's got some really interesting uh, stripes here on the uh, stockings. So when we're drawing our figure, our, uh, our Christmas figure here, let's just keep that in mind to kind of get it pretty, pretty accurate, okay? The head, head size and the body size is one and a half head lengths. So we're just scaling things a little bit. And if you watch my, you know, channel here on a regular basis, you'll know I always try to work with um, scale so you kind of get ideas with thirds, halves, when we're doing our drawings and our paintings. So you kind of use dimensions and scale to kind of get things somewhat accurate. Okay, so let's start. And I forgot to mention too, if you're new here, please subscribe. You hit that subscribe button below that little red button YouTube has, subscribe. You hit subscribe, you'll get all our videos here. We're constantly making videos. We do at least one one or two every week. Sometimes we do three or four a week. Depends how uh, much time I can devote to uh, working and having uh, uh, producing some videos uh, more than my usual. But uh, in any case, if you uh, hit subscribe, you'll be sure to uh, get my videos. And then if you even hit the notification bell, then you'll know exactly when they come out and you'll be able to uh, click on them right away and check them out. And if you like what you see, you can follow along, draw and paint. If you're not so interested in that one video, you can wait till the next one comes out, maybe in a day or two, or maybe even uh, sometimes I'll make one or two in a day or three videos in a day. So you can kind of, you can like pick and choose which videos you'd like to work with and, and draw and paint from to uh, uh, improve your artwork. So that's the main thing here. 
is we want to improve our watercolors, improve our drawing skills, keep ourselves moving forward, progressing, making progress, good progress, so that our paintings are more beautiful and exciting and we'll be happier. We're always happier when we're making better paintings, so that's why if you come on by, subscribe to my channel, you'll be learning all the best information on watercolors, drawing and painting watercolors, and all the techniques and uh, methods that you'll use to uh, make your, uh, your paintings look fantastic. Okay, so now we went over the scale. We're all set with our scale. We have to make sure here now we're looking at our figure across from us and we're saying, well, we have to leave plenty of room for the hat because the hat on this figure, it goes quite a bit up high. So let's make sure we do that. So let's not make our head of our figurine here, our stuffed figurine, too much high in the rectangle. Let's leave our, let's leave room. Okay, so let's make our head here of our figurine here. And then we have the hat. Okay, the hat goes across here about half, not quite halfway. And there's some hair here. And we have a nice Santa Claus type hat, a nice wool hat. And then we have some pom-poms here with some green ornate and look at that we have some fun look at that wow <laughs> so here we just take our pencil lines and we there we go that's our hat okay and now we're gonna do our ears and our head and our face here and we just go around and the other ear is up here, like so. And then here we have the hair. And then we have the nose, like that. And we have the eyes, like that. And then we have a smiley face there. And then we have a bow tie. And we have a little bit of a fancy uh, scarf on, on our figure. And then we have our arms here. We have some stripes on the sleeves, on the cuffs, and then and we have a, some overalls here, some red overalls, and. And we have some striped pants, some stockings or pants for our figurine here. There we go. Now we can have fun here, change things around a little bit. I, I'm going to make this figurine waving. It makes it more exciting if I leave the figurine with the two arms just down at the figurine's side. That's not going to look as good. If I make the figurine waving, that looks much better, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. 
there we go. So we have a waving figurine. It looks exciting. The uh, figurine is engaged with us. I'll just put the stripes on the hat here. And again, you're having fun with this. This is not, um, we're not drawing something where we can't have some fun and uh, use a little creative license and There's a ponytail there. Okay, that's our figurine. I hope you like this. I hope you can see this pretty pretty well on the video here. I think it, it's pretty pretty good. I think I'm looking at the camera, the viewfinder on my camera here, my uh, video camera. It looks like you can see the drawing pretty well. That's the drawing. Let's. Uh, take a break and we're gonna come back and we're gonna actually uh, paint this and this is where the fun is again if you think your drawing doesn't look all that great don't worry about it I always say this with watercolors when you're doing your pencil drawings the pencil drawings a lot of times don't look all that phenomenal because you know you're you're rendering things accurately with your pencil drawing that's the main thing you're getting things you know scales correctly again we're using one and a half heads here for our body, which we did do. So we, we explained how to do that. You want to get your scale correct. You wouldn't want to have um, just as a um, like a, a small uh, note here. Like we wouldn't want to have a figure where we start out and we have you know like a, a small a smaller head and then we have like a really big you know body for our. Uh, or, or the opposite, or a really large head, and then a small, and then a small body for our figurine. So we kind of want to, we want to scale that correctly, and that's all we have to worry about is getting that, again that scale of one head, and then the body is one and a half, is one and a half head lengths, and then the legs are here. So as long as we get that correct. we're going to be in really good shape. If we can get that scale again good, you know, same thing with if you're drawing the human body, the human form, you know, you're going to want to try to keep that, you know, seven and a half head lengths for your, for the height of, you know, if you're drawing a standing, standing human, you know, you're going to want to get that seven head lengths for your height. You wouldn't want to draw a human being and then you have like four four head lengths. You know what I'm saying? Like you always want to have things scale correctly. That, that's the main thing. Try to scale your your drawings somewhat close by when you like when you first start your drawing just look at it carefully and just take a few minutes and say okay well you know if I'm drawing a, a figurine okay the size of the head how big is the figurine compared to the size of the head and then you look and you scale and say okay well the figurine is approximately the head length is two head lengths for the body one okay one head length here and then two for the body one two so we have about two head lengths for the body what he one head length is the head one 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 there and then one here we said it was one and a half, so that'd be one, one there. I put my finger there to hold the mark, and about a half, and that's correct. One and a half. Okay, we'll be right back. We'll start painting. Having a little more fun now because we get to use the paints. Our drawing's complete, and again, don't worry if your drawing doesn't look 100% great. Once you start doing your painting, it's going to look fantastic. Okay, all right, we'll be right back.
Welcome back everybody and we're going to start our painting now. We have um, our pencil drawing completed. We have our palette full of fresh clean water, uh, fresh clean paint, fresh squeeze to paint I should say. Nice and moist paint. You have to have moist paint for, for this uh, type of watercolor painting. I always uh, uh, mention that. Um, any of my uh, videos, if you're looking up my videos and you're looking up palettes and paints, how to use a palette, you know, if you type in Chris Petrie, how to use a palette, uh, my palette, Chris Petrie, anything palette with my name, Chris Petrie, palettes, paints, I cover usually, you know, in those videos, all the details of how I, um, what colors I use, how the palette should be set up. Um, you, you're going to want to have fresh, moist paint all the time when you're, when you're painting. You don't want to try to scrub a dry paint when you're, when you're painting a, a watercolor. Uh, with my style of watercolor, you need that fresh, juicy paint. And as you can see, my palette, I added some colors in here. I was running low on some colors. So when you run low on your colors, squeeze some new uh, two paint in there. Make sure you have plenty of paint to work from when you're working. And uh, I always use fresh, clean water. So right now, you can see my water is somewhat fresh and clean. It's got a little bit of, we used it uh, on another video just a, a couple hours ago. But it is pretty fresh and clean. This is good for now, and I'll change it out as we go through this painting too as well. So I'm always using fresh, fresh water. And uh, we're going to use a um, number five. I have a Da Vinci uh, travel brush. So we'll use this. It's a good size for the uh, painting. So um, here it's a, you know, this is approximately a five by seven painting, five inch by seven inch. So let's uh, begin here. We're going to go right in fresh squeezed tube paint color. I'm looking across from me and I'm saying, what colors would I start with? Let's start with red. Let's start with our cadmium red. And then we'll use some alizarin crimson. So we're going to try to get some different red paint going here. And I'll use some uh, burnt sienna too as well. So we'll get some reds going out here. And then we want to always have you know, a little bit of cool, warm and cool all the time with your, your paints. We don't want to just have boring looking paintings. We want to keep Okay, the light, let's make our light insignia. The light is coming from over here. From this side of the painting. So I'll just remember that as I go. So if I need to add some shadows here and there, I'm going to and this is something where you're having fun. We have a couple buttons on there. Those are uh, white buttons, so we're going to... Maybe we'll go for some sap green. For over here, there's a little more shadow. So let's... There we go. Cadmium red. And look at that, we have our figurine coming along real nice here. Our stuffed uh, figurine. Our stuffed uh, Christmas uh, holiday. Character here and let's go with some greens. Okay, green, let's go sap green, uh, olive green, sap green, chromium of oxide up there too. Let's do, let's use some 
interesting greens here. Okay. Okay, some cobalt blue for some shadowing up there like that. If you, uh, you know, uh, when we're working with watercolors, we would call that wet and wet painting where, you know, you put down some wash and then you right away go right in quick and just add a little bit of darker color maybe for some shadowing like that. And it's one, two, three, you have it and it's good, looks good. Okay, and then here we have some more green. Then we can go in and even get some cadmium lemon yellow mixed with a touch of sap green. And that gives us a little more light, that light green look, like so. Okay. And then we'll go with some darker green up to there, like that. So we have the light shadow, we have the shadow over here underneath. And then we have the And then we just work out that color right along there. Okay, and then we're going to continue on. A little bit of blue and some green. And this is the shadow side, so it's going to be a little darker. So you can kind of see how it's lighter over here. The light's coming from here. And then over here, you have some shadowing. You can go with some cobalt blue. Infuse some of the cobalt blue there. More green here cadmium lemon yellow we're going to use again that nice bright cadmium lemon yellow for there and we are really looking fantastic here you can add your own color combinations. Now I'm going to make this green here. So you can add in different colors if you want. I, I decided to make this green, this portion of the uh, clothing green. It was actually red. So if you think it'll look better a different color, by all means, you're the artist. You're the artist. You can create your own minor changes or major changes, whatever you think you want to do. Okay, so we have this here is this is white. So we're just going to put some shadowing here. This is a white scarf. So we'll just add a little bit of shadowing there. Like so. Flesh color. Yellow ochre and a touch of uh, cadmium red. Okay, now the flesh color is fine throughout the whole. There we go. And then some more flesh color, yellow ochre, red, and uh, cadmium red and ye uh, yellow ochre. So 
So we'll do some flesh color for the hands. And I'm going with this, what I'm looking at across from me, the figurine. The stuffed figurine is, is looking uh, So I'm putting some shadow on one side. There we go. A little bit of shadow on one side of the hands over here. The light's coming from the from this side across. And let's we're gonna go in and get more of the let's try some more we're having a fun time this is the cap here we're doing the hat We're going to do the stripes of the hat. And there's some green here. So we're going to add some green up here. some shadowing there so I add a little bit of that cab uh, cerulean blue for some shadow and then we have some splashing here. I'm going to try to go around that. That's the uh, I'm just trying to make make it so that I can show that white ball on top of the hat and if you start to have some paint you can blot up some paint like that And if you need to blot up a little bit of paint, no problem. You take your tissue. And we can always go back in with some cadmium red. Like that. Again, straight. I use straight, straight paint right out of the tube. No water. Dry brush. And then you can go right back in there and uh, fire that into the to the watercolor paper and it's not going to really blossom or bloom or too much you know if you as long as you're using straight paint with no water even though that paper is damp right there if you use straight paint you should be okay but that's something that's a feel you get for watercolor eventually you, after painting a while you you kind of get the feel for the uh, when the when things are drying Okay, so now we're going to do some raw umber and a 
raw umber and yellow ochre. We're going to do some of the hair. And again, too, we're going to go around this. Cerulean blue. I'll go around that pom pom a little bit there. I'd like to go around the. Uh, so we're we're going around this uh, scarf too, the white scarf. So we're negative shape painting here. They, we call this a negative shape painting, where you paint around a shape to make it appear. So when we paint that blue paint around the pom-pom in the scarf here, you'll notice it appears and it looks And that's how we Same thing here, we can paint around this pom-pom on this hat there, like so. Just a little bit, and and we'll do more of the background uh, as we're finishing up the painting, but we just try to negative shape paint as we go. And we can use different reds. So we use a lizard and crimson. And we'll do some of the cuffs here. Cadmium red. Okay, we're coming along nicely here. We'll do a little more details, maybe. I think I see one, two. Just did the um, bow tie there quick, and then we're let's use some ivory black and Payne's gray, maybe a little bit of burnt umber. And let's do, we're plenty dry now, so we have, once this uh, flesh tone has dried completely on the face of our figure, our uh, stuffed, stuffed, uh, stuffed uh, figurine here, we can do the eyes. We 
There we go. And we'll do a little bit of shadowing under the nose here. And we'll do some shadowing here, just a little bit in the ears, side of the face here, under the nose. There's a little bit of a shadow there. I don't know if that looks so great. We could always uh, lift up a little bit with the tissue if you find that you don't like a shadow or a, a wash that you put on. We can uh, add a little bit of red to the nose here. We can make the nose red. And that might look a little better. I think it does. And if it, again, let it dry and then come back in and do the nose over again with the red paint, I think. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll, we'll just, uh, a little bit of shadows by the ears. All right, this is a perfect time to take a break. We've done a lot of painting so far. You can see we've got most of our figurine done. And uh, let's uh, let's take a break though, because if we keep going, we're, we're probably going to lose a little bit of our uh, concentration, and we might, you know, do some washes that don't work too good, or we might uh, make a few missteps when we're, you know, it's always good to take breaks as we go. You know, if you watch me on a regular basis, you'll always hear me say take breaks. It's really important. Take breaks as you paint because uh, the painting process takes a lot of concentration. Um, and so, be that as it may, a break will, for 15 or 20 minutes, will give you a new um, sense of um, concentration and energy as you come back. You'll also come back and look at something and say, oh, I, I'd like to do this or that or the other thing. Um, so you'll also, when you come back to look at your painting, you'll be able to maybe see a few things you didn't see while you were painting that you can say, I'd like to change this or change that perhaps a little bit here and there. So let's do that. Let's, let's, uh, take a quick break, maybe 15, 20 minutes. We'll come back and we'll, we'll finish up. We're pretty much quite a bit, uh, along the way here. So we're making good progress and, uh, we'll come back in just a few seconds. Okay, we are back. We're back and we're going to finish up our fun and interesting Christmas figure here. So we're going to actually, I poured some fresh clean water in my uh, water pail. The, these greens up here look fine, but this is getting a little muddy down here. I might leave those reds there. That's fine. So sometimes I'll just... I'll clean up my palette if it looks like some areas are a little bit uh, muddy looking for, for my own uh, my own tastes. Everyone's different. You can some people like to use a lot of different colors and let everything mix and mingle. You know that's that's a style too. A lot of people like to do that. That's fine. I like to just clean up everything so that I can definitely see the colors. So here you can see there's red and green, a little bit of the uh, cadmium lemon yellow up here. That's fine, but when I start to mix a lot of colors, I tend to feel like I, I need to just get a, a fresh, fresh, clean start over here uh, on some of the new colors we're doing. So here, let's, uh, okay, I'm going to do a little red nose there. I don't know if that's not really, our, our, our stuffed animal didn't have that. Our stuffed animal had it, had it uh, just fle flesh color, so there wasn't any real. So let's just uh, okay. There we go.
And, okay, we have that. Let's do the cadmium red. Alizarin crimson. Let's do the stockings here. And here we go. And we have some greens. Blue and green, cobalt blue and green, sap green. And some more cobalt blue, purple, maybe a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. We'll do a little bit of a shadow color maybe. Here we're going to do some shadow color underneath. And I just kind of do a little quick uh, shadow color there, a little bit of warm and cool. And we'll we'll put some blue and purple on the uh, on the sides here. We can shift over to a larger brush if we want. We'll maybe go to a number eight or a number six or a number eight. And a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. Couple splashes. And I'll try to tie this in a little bit. A little bit of warm. We want some warm, some cool. We just mix that in a little bit like that. Some splashes here and there just to make it look interesting. And I think we're pretty much good here. That's all. A little bit of warm, a little bit of cool. And we'll leave the, um, we'll, we'll leave that. A little bit of French ultramarine blue here and there. Maybe a little bit of red, cadmium red. And I'm trying to just uh, harmonize the painting with some cadmium red and some alizarin crimson. Over in these areas where it was mostly blue. I had mostly blue up in these upper areas here behind our stuffed animal here. So I figured let me... I 
I think it was good that I uh, added some uh, I added some uh, some red and some purple now too. And then we'll do some more. Purple and blue, French ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet. A little bit of shadowing along there. And a little bit of shadowing, shadowing along here. We're trying to get a sense of light. A sense of light here. So a little bit of shadowing on the, uh, the stockings here on our stuffed animal here. And we have uh, some... A little bit of... And this should be a little darker here, maybe. A little bit of blue and green. And we can just add some shadowing. And that little bit of shadowing makes a big difference. It looks really good. A little bit of green, blue. We'll just mix the colors here. Splashes. If you don't like the splashes, you can always lift them up if you think they don't look good. Sometimes they don't look good if you splash on damp paper. So I would lift those up if they don't look good. But I think the rest looks fine. All right, so we have a fun figure here, our uh, stuffed animal. Christmas figure, figurine. And we had fun doing this. We basically got the colors all in first, the major colors that we see when we were doing our figure. Then we added in our shadows. So we added in some, the light source is coming from this way, the left, this way. So we, we added some shadowing on the right side of the figure, underneath the arm here, over here, here, over here is more light, more light over here. Then we added some shadow there. We added some shadows on the stockings here. Um, we added a shadow for the figure coming this way. Same thing here. We should add a little more, a little more shadow there, like that, like so. And that is a fun Christmas figure, stuffed animal figurine. Let's peel our tape off. We'll do a little quicker. 
We'll do a quick uh, close-up of our painting. Let's see how it looks. Okay, we'll zoom in. Okay, there we have it. A fun figurine. We can we can slide this over. And there we have our figurine here. So this is really this is just so much fun. You don't the pressure is off when you're doing things like this, because it's just like a real fun exercise, composition. You don't have to worry about anything, you know, like getting it perfect or such, you know, you can just have a fun time. It's a holiday type thing too, holiday painting. So no, no pressure and uh, hope you enjoy this and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.